YouTube, it's Zapdos TCG here with another TCG Online match together with my friend Jordi. Yes, uh, we are going to play uh, the standard format where I'm gonna play the Sidewai Valplume. And uh, yeah, what are you gonna play? I'll be playing uh, Volcanion with uh, the Flareon EX. I see. So uh, the, the thing you already did with your deck is pimp it out almost completely. You have uh, almost all full arts, which is awesome to show in the video. Yeah, I also have some uh, secrets to show, but unfortunately. Only one of the secrets will be shown. I see. Yeah, the, the Sun and Moon set has a bunch of uh, sweet secret rares that you definitely want to pull. So, actually, get one mulligan here because, uh, yeah, you didn't get uh, your basic out on turn one. Yeah, sadly. But here's my Volcano EX. Yeah, it looks pretty sweet. I got a, a weak uh, Rowlet and I got the extra mulligan. So, I got a bigger hand size, which is awesome. You also see my hands. Not sure if you can see it. But I have the secret rare of the Sun and Moon set, the Nest Ball. Yeah, really awesome. You also have that great playmat with Eevee. So I uh, start off just getting a floatstone onto that ba bad boy Rowlet. Uh, yeah. There's nothing much you can do up in the first turn. True, I'm just there, waiting. Yeah, the, the thing is, if you start first, you cannot attack. What do you think about that? Well, it can be good to set up your strategy, but it can also be well, if you start a second, you can already start to attack if you only need one energy to attack. Yeah, it's true. Like, Volcanion only needs one energy to already deal damage. Yeah, so you have benefits right there. I think decks that really need to start first are decks that really have to have the setup going. Like, if you want Valplume out uh, as fast as possible, starting first is an option. I'm not sure if Volcanion needs to start first because it's, it's quite great if you can already attack. Yeah, true, you can get the energy acceleration going on with the baby uh, Volcanion. But then again, if you start with a, an EX like Shaman, then you definitely want to start first to get it out of the active. Yeah, that's true. So uh, I searched my deck here, getting out Tauros, just because I want Tauros to absorb the damage because the Rowlets won't be doing much. Though those will evolve to Decidueye to snipe around mainly. You actually never attack mainly with your Decidueye? Yeah, I do, but in this matchup, uh, you are playing Volcanion, which is a fire type, which actually demolishes uh, the uh, Decidueye in one blow, so that's yeah. why I said I'm gonna go for the Tauros method. And well, I also have Lugia in my deck, but uh, we'll see in this matchup how it goes. Yeah. So I got a, a couple of balls in my deck. We have Level Ball, Timer Ball, and uh, I believe Nest Ball as well. So which one of those are your is your favorite? Well, still Ultra Ball. Because uh, you can put anything in your hand, whichever you like. Nest ball is always, is always, uh, well, you ha always have to put it on your bench, which doesn't activate the abilities. Yeah, that sucks. Definitely, uh, if Nest ball would have uh, stated that you put it in your hand, it would have been overpowered with Shaman, so <laughs> maybe it's best that they didn't do that. Or if it stated that you can activate your ability. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, I just get out an Oddish. It's a reverse, so it's uh, kind of cool like that. Uh, yeah, I just got my stuff out and uh, hopefully I can evolve soon enough. I don't get the Forest of Giant Plants turn one, so you're safe. So it's your turn. Yeah, I'm starting off with... Uh, did I draw a card? Yeah, you drew ah. a card. And there's the, the secret rare. <laughs> yeah, starting off with the Nest Ball. For uh, a regular Volcanion, of course. Yeah, you also check your deck. Always do that, guys, if you're uh, playing at a tournament where the stakes are really high. Definitely check out your deck and see what is priced. So, uh, in uh, his uh, yeah, deck, you definitely want to see uh, which Pokemon are priced, like the Shamans are, are always important. And, uh, yeah, what else? Yeah, I had one Shaman and one Flareon that were priced, so... Yeah, that's not good. I imagine that both of your Flareons were priced. That would have yeah, been... Uh, already had it. Yeah, that, that sucks. Uh, also, people uh, like to play Hoopa in uh, the Volcanion deck. Uh, you, you're not playing Hoopa, why is that? No, um, I can't really remember why though. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you don't want to start with it or something. Yeah, that's, that could be it. Well, if I, if I run Hoopa, I, ha I had to. Well, I have to run two, of course, because if you start with one. You're fucked. <laughs> yeah, true. But uh, the, the Hoopa is really great to get your all your Volcanion EXs on the field to actually deal a ton of damage on turn one really fast. But you're going for the slow meta and then building up with Flareon, so that's good as yeah. well. I can still get uh, the Volcanions out with Nest Ball and Ultra Ball, so it's not really a problem for me. So uh, yeah, and Max Elixir works out. <laughs> In the last video, the Max Elixir failed a couple of times, so it's yeah. a risky card. It's risky, but very good. 
Yeah, definitely. And basic decks. So uh, also uh, the regional tournaments in America uh, took place last weekend, and we saw that Darkrai X was the most played deck out of the entire tournament. What are your uh, opinion on that? Well, uh, I'm already belling up a Darkrai deck, but um, not the Turbo Darkrai because I'm not so into the whole I felt all energy yeah. attachments. So yeah, you you are playing Darkrai with. Well, I started off with Darkrai Giratina, but um, with the new set from Sun and Moon, I'm starting off with uh, Umbreon, putting in some, some Umbreon GXs. Yeah, Umbreon is a, a really great card, but uh, actually some people call it overhyped because uh, it actually lowered in value a bit and uh, yeah, it hasn't seen a bunch of play at tournaments yet, but that could change. Yeah, and strangely they don't even try to put Umbreon in a Darkrai deck because if you have your Darkrai in an active spot and you have your Umbreon in, on your bench, you can already build up your Umbreon with tons of darkness. Like, start off with uh, one of course to evolve your EV immediately and, uh, into your Umbreon. True. Build it up a little, your Darkrai automatically deals more damage and you already have your Umbreon set to finish the spots. Yeah, the, the other great thing about uh, running Umbreon is that you're also running a stage one, which means you won't get countered by uh, things like Jolteon, which yeah. is awesome. Never played against Jolteon yet. Yeah, it's really annoying. It, uh, it's uh, again with Vileplume, uh, with the item lock and then getting out a Jolteon, actually to prevent damage by basic Pokemon, which is, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Devastating at some point. So a bunch of shenanigans went on here. He used the supporter N uh, to get out stuff. Uh, he also got out of the active position uh, thanks to an escape rope, which actually plays out really well here because uh, I had two weak basics, uh, Rowlet and Adish on the bench. So he actually forced me to get one of them into the active position and he's actually gonna get a one shot on this turn. So that's awesome. Yeah, I also had a, a great uh, start to, to pull some cards. I had uh, my Squashing Earth up. I'm a shaman for five cards. Yeah, a shaman for five in the beginning is really powerful. Definitely followed by a supporter, so an N, then a shaman. It's even better when you have shaman for six cards and then a sycamore. That's burning to your entire deck. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you see the scorch earth going on. Scorch earth, very nice card. Yeah, it's uh, from one of the older sets. I think it's from Primal Clash, could be wrong though. Uh, but yeah, that's why it's uh, actually r risen in value a bit. So actually one dollar and a half or maybe more. Hopefully it won't uh, rotate. rotate very soon. Yeah, talking about rotating, you rotated my Rowlet straight into the discard. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that was actually unfortunate because I had the cards necessary to evolve. So. Now I have to get uh, the strategy going on once again. So I have another Rowlet. And there it goes. Rowlet straight into the Sidewire and one turn. So giant, Forest of Giant Plants is actually overpowered for Grass Pokemon. So this is also a card that uh, you're not uh, familiar with. is the Revitalizer. Put, yeah. What did it again? Uh, putting two Grass types from the discard into your hand. I've uh, uh, seen some play. And grass decks mainly like Lorantis, Decidueye, and of course um, the Vespa Queen deck, which did really well at regional. So, but why would they use it in a Vespa Queen deck? I mean, uh, well, they have to have their Pokémon and their discards to do more damage. Yeah, but they run that as a sort of a last resort when they are really aggressive and throwing away like a bunch of Vespa Queens early on, ah, yeah. and then getting them back with that. Like you did when you when you were when you were testing your Vespa Queen deck. Yeah, indeed. I already tested Vespa Queen. There should be a video about it soon. Uh, Vespa Queen is actually one of those decks that is really versatile. You can put uh, basically anything you want into the deck because most of the things you discard anyway. Very dangerous to deck out though. Yeah, indeed. With the acro biking and stuff. So uh, I uh, also use N in this turn, so uh, back to the game, uh, back a bit. Uh, so I got uh, two Decidueyes, or actually one Decidueye, the other one is coming up uh, pretty soon. It's a Shaman, uh, pretty hard to see right there in the corner, but uh, that Shaman g gives me a bunch of cards and I actually used N as well. I still haven't attached an energy though, so uh, this deck that I'm using only runs eight energies. Eight? Isn't that uh, a little few? Yeah, that is not much, but I prefer it that way because attacking 
is not the main point of the deck. The main point is getting the item lock going, absorbing damage with Taurus, and then using the Mad Bull GX together with sniping of the Sigui. So here we see Timer Ball, which could have uh, helped me get my second Sigui out, but both of the coin uh, flips were tails. Wow. Yeah, I don't like uh, luck-based cards. Yeah, Timer Ball definitely. You, you should expect that at least one of them would be heads, but uh, yeah, knowing my luck, <laughs> both tails. Just like the new, uh, well, the so-called N. Yeah, the Lima. Yeah. Again with uh, with the head and tails. I don't trust so, such cards, so. Yeah, it can help in the early game where you use the Lima card and get your opponent uh, stuck to three cards in the first turn. Yeah, but you can't st stuck yourself in such a spot. Yeah, true. When you uh, flip tails, and actually you see the first uh, feather arrow right there, we're sniping. Uh, the, tar the main target was Shaman. Why? Because usually, uh, actually most of the time, uh, this uh, Volcanian deck uh, does not have an, a solution to get Shaman out of his uh, bench spot, so there's that. Yeah, there's Parallel City to uh, get rid of that, but you won't want to run this in the Volcanian deck since that actually lowers the damage yeah, of I, the fire Pokemon. I even also ha um, only have like two Scorching Hearts. I had three, but uh, I replaced one with, um, I think, which was it? Not sure. Scorched Earth. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think you definitely definitely want to have two or three uh, stadium cards because there's a stadium war going on. So you see another sniping capability. Did I use it twice? I don't think so because uh, you actually uh, did a bunch of stuff and got the vile plume on the active position and gave it a ton of damage. Too bad that it was only uh, 120 damage, so you were one damage counter short. Ah yes. I remember that. Yeah, it's always sucky when you have like your strategy plan and then you just barely uh, were there for a knockout, but then again, only one HP remaining or FC 10. All right, so uh, this here you see an Ultra Ball going on, but uh, as you uh, may have noticed, Vileplume is in place, so we cannot use the Ultra Ball here, but uh, we're gonna return back uh, to it, so. Uh, we're actually gonna go back in time where we don't use it, so nothing going on here. Ah. So that actually was pointed out. So I'm gonna put others back into my deck and uh, get my uh, scar cards I discarded back into my hand. So always make sure that, uh, yeah, I thought actually that the Valkyrie was knocked out, but uh, he still has 10 HP remaining for some reason. The big misplay. Yeah, this can, this cannot, call be a, cannot be called a misplay. It's actually called a mistake in general. So. When you see this in a tournament, it's really difficult to return, but in a friendly match, it's uh, actually quite easy. You just uh, turn back in time and your opponent always sees your cards anyway, so it's actually beneficial for your opponent. Yeah, I'll, I also made that mistake. I didn't see the Vileplume and uh, I tried to play a, a, an item. <laughs> yeah, true. Vileplume, you ha always have to make sure that uh, it, uh, you don't play items. Yeah, it's, it's kind of the same with Garbodor. If you If you don't see it has a tool card on it, and you're still trying to use Shaman or something, then yeah, you're screwed. <laughs> True, yeah, same goes with Garbodor and Vileplume. Always make sure what you can or cannot do. So you see that Full Art Shikamore, I really like that card. It's from the Steam Seed chat, really uh, recent, which means I won't get, be getting a rotate soon. Yeah. There's my Flareon. The other one is my, in my prize cards. <laughs> yeah, here, here I, you see. I flipped uh, my finger at the Fabling because I wanted to play uh, an item. <laughs> and it is not allowed, so uh, the thing is that Valplume is stuck, you'll definitely have to knock it out uh, to uh, play your item, so uh, that's what you're gonna do right now. Also, your bench setup looks really, really sweet. Yeah. <clears throat> Here's me dealing not enough damage. Yeah, you actually build up and uh, knock out the Valplume and set up your, yeah, your Flareon. Wow, your Florian has a bunch of energies. Aren't you afraid that uh, a Lugia might strike out of nowhere? Well, no, I didn't really expect <laughs> you to run a Lugia. Yeah, you'll, you'll see it in the late game, but uh, for now, it's back to me. My Valplume is knocked out, so trainers are allowed, so I'm gonna do the same thing I would have done the last turn, so I'm gonna Ultra Ball and uh, get out my Oddish. Why didn't you try to pick out your, uh, your Lugia? Because she was, you saw I was building up my Flareon. Uh, the reason I did not do that is uh, because I wanted to get the item lock back uh, on the field. 
as fast as possible because I know you play the Fighting Fury belt and I didn't want that Flareon to have even more HP so I, I went for the Vile Plume first. Yeah, yes. And you knew my both my uh, Stadium cards were and my Death cards so you knew I, I couldn't... Yeah, replace the Forest of Giant yeah. Plants so now we see uh, actually Vile Plume. Uh, I'm actually gonna wait to evolve Valplume because I still have a few trainers I uh, left in my hand to, to, to use. So, so or actually I'm using the Valplume and uh, actually there's an Acro Bike or actually what is that? Cannot see it. It's an N. So yeah, I got out the yeah the Valplume and I'm using N in this situation. So uh, you get four cards and I get six, which is kind of good because I still need another Decidueye to snipe. You end me quite a couple of times, I recall. Yeah, this is uh, one of those matches where N is really important and the last uh, bit of the game you'll see how important it actually is. I think you used it like three times. Yeah, I do think I run three copies, so I used all of them. So uh, in my N, I got a... let's see here, did I get another card? I don't know, it's a Rowlet, so no Decidueye, which is unfortunate, so... Uh, yeah, cannot get another sniping capability, so I'm gonna give a DCE to the Decidueye. So why did you give it to Decidueye? Uh, yeah, the reason for that is that uh, I actually could have used it at the late game to actually uh, smack something for 90 damage, which could be enough to actually get myself some last two prize cards. So I wanted to have an, another attacker uh, as an uh, available option. And you already had uh, another one in your hands? A Decidueye? No, no, no. Uh, a DC. DCE, yeah. I, have, uh, I actually have Ultra, the DCE still left. I, there's one attached to Tauros, one to Decidueye, and I have still two uh, of them in my hands. So I have a bunch of them, so I definitely wanted to play one on the field. It wouldn't have been good to attach it to Taurus, which uh, doesn't need an extra energy. I think I was checking uh, if you already played Lysander or not. Yeah, Lysander is a really crucial card in the format. Because if I attacked you with my regular Volcanion, and you had Lysander in your hand or, or something, then you could Lysander to my Flareon and one-shot me like that. True. And uh, you're actually counting your energies and here is the, the most uh, crucial part of the game where everything actually uh, flipped your side actually to win is where you one shot at that Tauros. That yeah. Tauros was my ticket to win because Shaman was already going to the discard with sniping and I wanted to have that Mad Bull GX on the Flareon but in this situation we see four energies which is actually 130 damage, then uh, uh, Professor QQ for an extra 20 damage, is 150 damage, and then uh, 30 extra damage from the ability Steam Up, so 180 damage in total, which is a lot. Which, uh, one shot at your Tauros. Indeed, I, and you only need two more prize cards, but you'll see this match is still going, so there's a reason for that. You'll see uh, the Decidueye deck in action, so that's the main point of making the battle videos, is to see how both decks actually function. So you'll see that in this video, which is a good thing. Uh, I'm in a disadvantage here, because as you see, I have uh, the two DCEs, and that's everything I have. So I had to use the Sycamore in this situation. It's such a shame to throw away all those DCEs, because I actually need them later on, but I, that's the only thing I could have done in this situation. Yeah, I think now is the turn you have like three Decidueyes. Uh, I think there are only two for now, but we'll see how it goes. This could be the turn though. Yeah, that trick, so the Forest of Giant yeah. Plants helps me to get my three bad boy owls and to play. And uh, I'm actually gonna triple snipe on the Shaman, poof, out of nowhere, getting two prizes to actually fill my hand up. And it's still my turn, I haven't even attacked yet, so the thing I want to do is get rid of the active position right now, because that Flareon is way too dangerous and I have weakness, so... Uh, as you see, I have another Tauros, I really would have benched the Lugia in this situation, but I wanted to absorb the damage, so for now... I'm actually gonna retreat. The thing I also could have done is I'd retreat to the Vile Plume. Yeah, you knew I could one shot almost new alley, almost everything. So you had to retreat to your Vile Plume because then I only had one prize to take. True. In this situation, I'm in a yeah a pickle here. There's not much I can do. If I attack, I'm screwed. That way you win the game by uh, the, doing a bunch of stuff. I already use a supporter. So I have to hope that you don't have Lysander. So for now, I'm just gonna risk it. Just gonna manually retreat to the Vile Plume and uh, let it be my uh, yeah, bodyguard for a while. 
I did have VS Seeker, but I couldn't use it. <laughs> yeah, that, thanks to the vial plume. So that's a really great method. I also counted your, I think your two light senders are already in the discard, so that's why I went for this method. Yeah. And as you see, my uh, the, the play looks really uh, awesome. All those full art in play. <laughs> Well, Thoros isn't the full art. Yeah, I know, but uh, I, I think it's weird that the new GXs come with a, a regular art, a full art, which the regular art also looks like a full art, which is weird. So now you're using the uh, Fisherman, getting four energies in your hand. Nah, I only had three in my discard. I see, so uh, I see another energy, so you have a bunch of energies in play, you, uh, a manual attachment, so that Flareon is looking really dangerous. I don't have uh, yeah anything anymore to counter with that. That's another one shot. So uh, usually uh, this is sometimes an auto loss because uh, I'm weak to fire, but then again, if Tauros did not get one shot, the, the match would be completely different. Or have you had uh, Lugia early? Yeah, true. In this situation, Lugia would be the one to uh, go for, but then again, I could not one shot it. You have one, two, three, four, five energies with my DCE in total is seven, which 140 damage is not enough. Mm, that's true. But I do bench the Lugia because uh, the only thing I can do at this point. Just in case. Yeah, and I still have not much cards left in my deck, so uh, hopefully there are two energies. I did not count them all, so uh, the next time I definitely have to count them. <laughs> you wanted the energies for your Lugia or your Tauros? Uh, this is a pickle here. I, if I attached due to the Tauros, then I could have used Mad Bull GX. But in this situation, I can not attack anymore. I uh, burned through my entire deck and I had to discard the two DCEs at one point. So for now, I'm only sniping and hoping to stall. So uh, I think I will be using an N here, hoping that uh, you won't be able to one-shot my Tauros. Yeah, here you started sniping on a Flareon. Yeah, indeed. That was my target. Getting rid of all those energies would be uh, awesome. And you'll never guess how the uh, the match would end. So uh, there's that. Okay, never guess it too. Yeah, we're discussing some stuff here. So I'm uh, commanding my Decidueyes to attack and group to attack that Flareon. So 60 damage on that. And that's actually the only thing I can do for the attacking point. So now I'm just gonna... I was doubting on using Lysander now, but uh, yeah, you had a bunch of cards in your hand. Yeah, I think uh, a couple of eight. Yeah, that's why uh, I'm thinning out my deck, which isn't the best thing. But uh, actually, uh, yeah, I wanted to see what's left in my deck to uh, top deck that energy. So I, as you see, only one energy, which is... Uh, yeah. Ah, that's why you used ultra, ultra Ball, to see what's in your deck. Yeah, that's also something you can do. Because you knew you had nothing in it. Yeah, I can also uh, uh, do some stuff and use the GX move of the uh, Decidueye, getting three cards from my discard into my hand. But yeah, you will one-shot me at one point, yeah. so... You see, you see another end. And also, I used Ultra Ball to check where my Float Stone was, and it was not end there. So I immediately knew that Tauros would not get out of the active position, and this was the match right there. But uh, I used the end, and uh, in this situation, I was hoping that you don't get an energy. Because one energy, one QQ, one whatever uh, can yeah. uh, win you the game. Well, I had to, I had to top deck, but uh, let's see what I have. <laughs> what was it? I think it was maybe uh, uh, yeah, it was the delinquent. Delinquent. That is an yeah. interesting card in the late game. Make so, sure you also have one card card in your hand, just like me. Yeah, indeed. So uh, we're both down to one card. A really, uh, yeah, interesting game here. And uh, you will definitely attack, but not for enough damage. Well, I wasn't sure if you had already had all your DCEs in your discard or not. So I wasn't sure if your last card in your hand was a DCE or not. If it was a DCE, this match would have ended right there. <laughs> That's a fact. But then I wouldn't have uh, attacked. Yeah, you count the DCEs at this point, so you see there's four of them. Special energies are uh, counted as a regular card. You can only play four copies uh, maximum. But this was a good video to show you how the Decidueye works and actually uh, it, Tauros did not do actually anything, only the Decidueyes did something but it's still neat to show. And the Vileplume. Bloom. And the Vileplume, Bloom, Trainer Lock, so uh, 160 damage on the Tauros. I'm Lysandering out one of your uh, tanky Pokemon. Ah uh, yes. Because they have 3 or 3 cost and I actually uh, command my owls to uh, hunt after the uh, Flareon once again, so 120 damage on the Flareon. I still have a switch in my deck, so if I top that, you would have lost anyway. 
true. But for now, I think, uh, what are you gonna do? You're gonna play N. Yeah, Ooh. another top deck. And the thing here is, this match could have continued and I could have sniped that Flareon and get myself two prizes, but the thing is, this N actually, uh, actually uh, thinned out my deck and I actually have zero cards back in my deck. So, yeah. And even... followed by Delinquents made you lose all your cards in your deck. Yeah, and definitely. So that strategy was really great. Uh, I actually uh, decked out in this situation, but you see, the Shijuai can come back from the match and uh, that was actually, uh, you actually win the game automatically by uh, decking out. <laughs> and that's my secret Taurus. So yeah, that's that. That was a great match. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Yeah, I certainly did. Yeah, I hope you guys learned a lesson here about uh, both decks and uh, we will see you guys soon with more TCG videos. Uh, stay fresh guys and uh, subscribe so you don't miss out. Peace out. Peace.